Mets Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by your Tri-State Ford dealer, who has five of the top ten cars and counting best sellers. So why aren't you driving a Ford? And by MetLife. Get Met in pain. Series for 51 years. The last time they won a World Series was 88 years ago, back in 1908. And they've had rotating coaches as managers here. They had a series of like eight coaches that rotated. They managed for a month and then somebody else stepped in. These are all the things that they've tried to break that long losing streak of not being in a World Series. That is out over left center field, well over the bleachers on a rooftop here at Wrigley. Not too far from where Jose Hernandez hit one yesterday off of Mark Clark. That gave the Cubs two big insurance runs en route to a three to nothing victory. Those numbers don't tell the whole story on Hernandez because over his last 17 games, He's hit four of the seven homers and batted 361. Ray Sanchez is the regular shortstop, but he's had a wrist problem. He was on the DL earlier this year. So Hernandez playing now makes the third out of the second inning. Cubs go in order. Four in a row retired by Bobby Jones. So we've seen the long ball twice. Sosa's two-run job giving the Cubs a one-run lead over Lance Johnson's leadoff homer on the Modell scoreboard. Third inning at Wrigley, 2-1 to one Chicago, and Ray Ordonez takes downstairs from Amari Telemaco. That's a foul ball, one and one to Ordonez. Another thing the Cubs have done here in their, I guess you'd say history, they had a radio announcer come out of the booth and take over as the manager of the ball club. Lou Boudreaux was broadcasting the games for the Cubs. He came down and became the manager of the Cubs. The manager was Charlie Grimm at that time, and Charlie Grimm went up in the radio booth and took over the broadcasting. Well, they were both under contract, so they were simply reassigned, I guess, but well, not all that long ago within the last 20 years. I guess it's about 19, what, 78, 9, 80, whenever uh, Jerry Coleman came out of the broadcast booth to manage the San Diego Padres. And he went back to the booth. <laughs> <laughs> right Real fast, too. That. He didn't last very long. Another thing that happened here, Leo DeRocher came in as manager of the Cubs in 1966. He said, this is no eighth place team, and he promptly proved it in 1967 when the team finished ninth. 2-2 two -two to Ordonez. Off of Telemaco, they may not get Ordonez, and they don't. So an infield hit for Ordonez, who has been struggling at the plate, gives the Mets a leadoff base runner here in the third. And a chance for the Mets to use Bobby Jones in the sacrifice situation. Mets trailing by one run. He'll be bunting here. Thank you, New York and New Jersey, for making Coors Light the number one light beer. One thing Bobby Jones has proven that he can do is lay down a sacrifice bunt. Led the league in that category last year. Only had five this season as opposed to the 18 of a year ago. Gomez on the grass, fully expecting the bunt. And the pitch up and in. Checked it out at first, but no swing by Jones. One and nothing. Man, the Cubs also the first organization to use an organ in the ballpark. Fellow by the, by the name of Roy Nelson in 1941 came in, started playing the organ. They still have a guy, not the same guy, playing the organ here now. Out in front of the plate, up the first baseline, and foul. So it's one and one. You hear that organ in the background now. There was a lot of people who would have shot him. If they had a chance, <laughs> a lot of people don't like that organ playing in the ballpark. There he is, somewhere behind that last pole. That's bulletproof glass, I think, that he's behind. Some of the organists are pretty creative. Like in Pittsburgh, they'll try and play a song that somehow relates to the name of the hitter. He's taking some wild stabs. Right here, Bobby Jones stabbing at a 1-0 pitch and bunting it foul. So Ardonias measures his lead at first. And Jones bunts it foul. How does the bunt stay on? Two strikes and a ball. The odds are they'll keep it on. Trying to get that potential time run down to second base. 
Last year Jones led the National League in sacrifice bunts. I know it's an inexact science Ralph but do you agree with me the opinion that largely there is just no excuse for a pitcher not being able to bunt a runner up. I agree with you. You know they take batting practice and play around trying to hit home runs in BP. They split up into little groups the pitchers do. But they can help themselves most often by doing that getting the bunt down services only play is to first and give Jones credit on two strikes he executes the successful sacrifice bunt for Donia's at second now with one man away. So Jones gets it done and Lance Johnson who went deep leading off the ball game will now try and bring the tying run home. Let's look at today's episode in our Chrysler League Leaders Series. See where Lance Johnson sits. Well, I promise it's coming. That's our fall preview. Here it is. Broke the tie with Dante Bichette. The Rockies pitching a complete game shutout at home last night. Mark Thompson getting it done. Third time in the history of Coors Field that they've had shutouts pitched there. In the hole, good play by Hernandez. And he gets Johnson. We'll put a circle around that one as Jose Hernandez ranges far to throw out Lance Johnson. Good play there by Jose Hernandez and Ordonez a good play on the bases because if he had tried to go over to third he had a shot in him at third base a good shot and he makes an outstanding play here. Here's Ray Ordonez he starts to go decides he better not go. And remains in scoring position for the next batter Espinosa. Alvaro fly to center in the first inning. And he hits this one well to right center, but Bullet has a beat on it. And the Mets are done in the third inning. They waste a leadoff infield hit by Ordonez. Middle of the third on the Model scoreboard. It's the Cubs two and the Mets one. And we're back at Wrigley Field out in the bleachers enjoying life with the fans. And lo and behold, we find a Mets fan. The next Patriot New Yorker, Leslie Shigasaki, who's out now in the Chicago area, but shows her Met loyalties by wearing the Mets cap. A braver person than I am at this point. You go way back with the Mets, don't you? I will. All right. Oh, very yeah, That's a challenge has been go. met. Now, I probably look pretty ridiculous. But at any rate, you go way back with the Mets, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. 1969 Mets World Series. I was at the game with my dad, and he left me sitting in the bleachers. Well, we didn't have bleachers in Chase Stadium, but he left me sitting in the stands. So he went out on the field with the rest of the maniacs and rip up the field. And I was only four years old, so go figure. Go figure that the Mets for her dad were a little more important than the four-year-old. But <laughs> at any rate, uh, she's here enjoying the ball game and uh, cheering on the Mets. And I guess I'll keep the cap on for a little while, That's fellas. Right, you better. All right. All right, Telemaco, the Cubs pitcher, takes a strike from Bobby Jones as we start the last of the third here at Wrigley Field. Telemaco with a two to one lead over the Mets. Sammy Sosa's two run home run in the first inning, giving him the advantage. Quickly, it's 0 2. Samori, one for 15 so far this year in his major league career. On the outside corner, first strikeout for Bobby Jones. That's a pitch. It's a good pitch in this ballpark. Low outside slider. Tough to hit in the air. Jones gets his first strikeout with that slider. And uh, Amore. Well, he doesn't fit the song right there. But Bobby Jones loved the location. So one man away and Scott Bullock fouled out. First time up. Off of Brent Maine, nothing in one. This 
somewhere up here. Fran Healy smiles. Well, two times now in this ball game, the mask recipient of a foul ball off the bat of a batter. One time for Brett Main. One time for Scott Service. Bunt foul, and so Jones in front, no balls and two strikes on Scott Bullock. Bullock trying to bunt against the defense of Espinosa, the third baseman, who was in tight to guard against a bunt for a base hit. He was bunting toward third. Not a very good idea with the third baseman playing in. Now with two strikes, he drops back. Off the outside corner, one and two to Bullock. The eighth start of the year for Scott. Brian McCray simply getting an afternoon off. He's played briefly with the Pittsburgh Pirates as well as the Chicago Cubs. He's played very well defensively in this series. Nothing but air for Bullet. Second straight strikeout for Bobby Jones. Has now retired six in a row. Two gone in the third, and Ryan Sandberg up next. That time, Bobby Jones going to the curveball and getting it in a good spot out of the strike zone. And bullet goes down like a spinning bullet. So Jones now deals with Sandberg, who singled and scored in the first inning, coming around on Sosa's home run. Nine gold gloves for Ryan Sandberg. Just 123 to go to catch Pete Rose. Just surpassed Darrell Evans, and his next hit will tie him with Greg Nettles. You put Sandberg in the Hall of Fame, Ralph? He's got all the credentials to be there. A great defensive man. The best fielding percentage of any second baseman in the history of baseball. And he's hit with power. He's done a good job. Actually, Jim Fry, who used to coach for the Mets, was the man as a manager that got him to go for the long ball. He says, you're strong enough to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Alfonso with an easy play takes care of Sandberg. And now Bobby Jones starting to settle in. Has retired seven in a row, including the Cubs in order in third. Fran Healy will join you next. End of three on the Modell scoreboard, 2-1 Cubs. Mets Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. And by Pontiac. Check out Pontiac driving excitement at your tri-state Pontiac dealers. Mets up in the top of the fourth, and here's Fran Healy. Okay. Bernard Gilkey leads it off. He struck out his first time up. Top of the fourth inning, and Gilkey takes outside. So it's 2-0 oh on the Met left fielder. It's 2-1. Cubs on top of the Mets. Two hits for each team. Good fastball for a strike. So it's 2-1. and one. Amory Telemaco doing the pitching for the Cubs in a big outing for him personally. And Gilkey hits a fly ball, doesn't get it. Left fielder Gonzalez makes the grab, so Luis Gonzalez making the catch, fighting the sun. Not an easy sky today, Ralph. Very tough sky, and also left field, the sun field early in the game. It swings over to center and then to right, so day baseball has its problems when you get into that sunshine. And a batter now will be Chris Jones. He struck out his first time up. Gonzalez doing a good job shading the sun out with his glove, glasses down. You try to keep that ball out of the sun. If it gets in the sun, you got no chance. And Jones unable to check his swing. It's a strike. Ralph, they talk about day baseball. A lot of guys, uh, when you were playing, seem to enjoy day baseball. I think today more so than ever before, players rather play at night. They're raised that way. They play an awful lot of night ball in the minor leagues, and they get used to going to bed late, getting up late. They prefer night baseball. Of course, the lights are much better than they used to be. At one time, they played just seven night games in the regular season when they first started to have lights. 
Ball hit back to Telemaco. Goes the first two down. I mentioned Telemaco, a big outing for him today. He has struggled. He has not been that impressive to Cubs management. So you, you have to believe that he has to impress them today or they might make a change as far as his status is concerned. Maybe get him some more seasoning in the minor leagues if he doesn't pitch well today. So far, he has a two-to-one lead. With two out here in the fourth, the batter Roberto Pettigini. He grounded out his first time up. Oh and one, and the Mets first baseman. It's a tough position this year for the Mets first base. Pettigini takes strike two. Telemaco struggled against left-handers. Doesn't pitch that much better against right-handers. Pulled to the right side. Sandberg to Grace. Sounds familiar. That'll do it. Three up, three down on the Modell scoreboard. At the end of three and a half, it's two to one Cubs. Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by 9X. Play ball at Mets Baseball Heaven, the New York Mets Adult Fantasy Camp. It's worth it. Every penny. A day of baseball and in the tub. Look at that I'm on. You'll take to the field with former Mets players and coaches such as Meon, Jackson, Wine, Flynn, Stearns, Zachary, Howard, and many more. It's a seven-day season created just for you. For more information, call 1-800-898-METS. That's 1-800-898-METS for Mets Baseball Heaven. Well, on a sun-drenched day at Wrigley Field, we'd like to remind you this copyright telecast is authorized under television rights granted by the New York Mets solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and Sports Channel is prohibited. Graham, we were talking earlier about Sandberg, a candidate for the Hall of Fame. What's your opinion on that? I'd say he is because he's a second baseman. He, he was almost flawless throughout his career here in Chicago, took a year off. But because of his stats at second base, I would certainly feel, not that he's a shoe in right now, but he's certainly a candidate. And uh, his counterpart, way back in the early days of the Cubs, Johnny Evers. Tinkers to Evers to Chance. These are the saddest of possible words. Tinker to Evers to Chance, a trio of bear cubs and fleeter than birds. Tinker to Evers to Chance, ruthlessly pricking our gonfal and bubble, making a giant hit into a double. Words that are witty with nothing but trouble. Tinker to Evers to Chance. That was written by Franklin P. Adams. There's a couple words there that I wouldn't want to use on the air. Gonfalon. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few of those words. Oh, and two on Mark Grace. The interesting thing about that, they made only 76 double plays in their history in one single season. And the other thing that's interesting about that, back in 1905, Joe Tinker and Johnny Evers got into a fight when Evers took a taxi to the ballpark, leaving Joe Tinker behind, and they never spoke after that. Should those three guys be in the Hall of Fame, speaking of the Hall of Fame? No chance had some nice stats. He was a great fielding first baseman. Yeah, speaking of good fielding first baseman, Mark Gray takes down in the dirt, so it's two and two on the Cubby first baseman. I know Frank Chance uh, led the league in stolen bases, which I guess is unusual for a first baseman, but they didn't necessarily dominate statistically. That poem might have helped him get into the Hall. I think Franklin P. Adams uh, was the main instrument he what he wrote for the New York world and uh, the other question is who was the third baseman in that trio of infielders you know I know that name. give me the first initial of the last name started with an s give me the second initial <laughs> of the last name well, I'll give you this first name and see if you can get it Harry 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 starts with an s yes Drive base in in the right field. So Mark Grace leads it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yes. Harry Steinfeld. Is it Steinfeld? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Harry Steinfeld. Well, you see Mark Grace on first base. And 
the bat, and now will be Sammy Sosa. Sosa hit a two-run dinger his first time up in the first inning. In fact, now is tied with Mark McGuire for the home run lead in the, in the major leagues. Now, you see he's got a shot at Hack Wilson. Hack Wilson, the greatest slugger that the Cubs have ever had. For six years, he was just outstanding for Chicago. He was a fire plug, wasn't he? A five foot six, 220 pounds, and he wore a size five shoe. Five foot six, 220 pounds, and there's a the man that could eat. <laughs> he could also drink. <laughs> I didn't want to say that. He went from 56 <laughs> home runs to 13. In 1930, he hit 56. 1931, he hit 13. So, so. Pops the ball up, shallow right field. Alfonso going back, Fall off by Chris Jones. That was a tough play. They're all tough plays today when they're hit up in the air. They tell a great story about Hack Wilson, his manager, Joe McCarthy. Didn't like the fact that he drank quite a bit, and so he had a little experiment for him. He got some worms, and he put them in a glass of whiskey. Well, obviously, the worms died, and they said, now what does that prove to you, Hack? And he says, it proves one thing. If you drink whiskey, you won't have worms. <laughs> hey Ralph, you had a shot at Hack Wilson's record. 56. I hit 54 one year. I had one rained out. I actually had 55, but it was rained out because it wasn't a five-inning ball game. Now, did, did did you recognize the fact you could get the record? Absolutely. Did it put more pressure on you? Not Luis, really. No. Well, Luis I mean, Gonzalez, by the way. You know, batter. I think pressure. It, it's become a, a a word that's used all the time today in baseball. Now, I don't believe that there's that much pressure put on you when you're trying to break some record that's long standing. I think that if you get near the record, like the 56 consecutive games with a base hit that Joe DiMaggio's has, I think that would give you some pressure. There's the Haxter. 56 home runs in 1930. The other thing, and you see the list there, the 50 home run hitters. And Sammy Sosa on a pace to hit 56. You see Hack Wilson, he had a tremendous uh, head, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He was. <laughs> 190 runs batted in is a little more impressive to me. I mean, that's the all-time record. There's a drive. Speaking of home run, gone. Home run, Luis Gonzalez. And the Cubs now lead 4-1 here in the bottom of the fourth. Second home run given up by Bobby Jones. Both of them two run home runs and the Cubs lead by a score of four to one and Luis Gonzalez with his eighth home run of the year. And this ballpark is a hitter's haven with a wind blowing out. And the batter now Scott service he flat out his first time up and Bobby Jones misses outside one and oh. Told by some of the people who follow the Cubs it's got service a little bit disappointed that the pitchers like to shake them off a whole lot. There's a strike. It's a funny game this game of baseball pitchers want to shake you off. When you're a catcher catchers are offended by it. And pitchers want their own catchers. I've got base in the right field so Scott service has his first hit of the game. Service hits a good pitch right here, low outside slider, and he goes with it, drives it into right field. Right out there where you want it, that's a pitcher's pitch, and he just did a good job of hitting. Fifth base hit. And service on first base, the batter now will be Leo Gomez. Gomez having a good season. He's 0 for 1 today. Takes outside. Ball 1. Gomez with 16 home runs. Decent for Leo Gomez. They weren't expecting that. Third baseman with the Cubs. Oh, 
goes the runner, and there's that drive to deep left field. Kupke looking up. Home run! Leo Gomez with home run number 17. single season that's 17 and the third two run home run hit in this game by the Cubs as they take the lead by a score of six to one Gomez getting a hanging breaking ball and it just rides the wind out over the left field fence so Greg Pavlik out talking to Bobby Jones who has struggled it's very hot very humid here in Chicago Bobby has been highly successful against these Cubs career-wise. He's five and one. Well, don't go away, fans, because in this ballpark, anything could happen. Back in 1979, the Phillies beat the Cubs 23 to 22. That was a game that saw Mike Schmidt hit four home runs in the ball game. As Axon starts up in the bullpen for the Mets, and there's an idea of how that wind blows. Ralph, in that game. In that game, the Philly, when the Mike Schmidt hit four home runs, Bobby Wine was the coach for the Phillies. Do you know after two home runs, Mike sat next to Bobby Wine and looked like they couldn't catch the Cubs? And he said, why don't you take me out of the game? He wanted to come out of that game, and Bobby Wine convinced him to stay in. He said, with the wind blowing out, you never know what can happen. He ended up hitting four home runs in one game. The Cubs led in that game 13-2 at one time. And it went 23 to 22 with the Phillies winning. Well, Dallas Green, a former general manager here in Chicago. Bobby Jones just took some warm up tosses. Well. Sometimes it's easier to pitch when there's no batter to get ahead. Mike Winters, a home plate umpire, evidently. Jones might be experiencing some problems with his arm. Well, he'll face Jose Hernandez. We're still in the bottom of the fourth. The Cubs have scored four. Hernandez takes a strike. One man out. Cubs and the Mets, you're watching all the action on Sports Channel. We'll be back at you again Saturday night from Florida when the Mets take on the Florida Marlins. And the 0-1 pitch up high, one and one. Uh, Jose Hernandez. That ground out was the second base in the second inning. Breaking ball. It's hit off the end of the bat. Alfonso with that again. I want to remind the fans that we invite you to enter the US Air Sports Channel fifth inning contest. If you can you can win round trip tickets for two anywhere U.S. Air flies in the continent or U.S., Canada, or the Caribbean. Or you may win a vacation package for four to Orlando, Florida. All you need to do is send us a card with your name, address, and phone number to U.S. Air Sports Channel 5th Inning Contest, P.O. Box 234, Woodbury, New York, 11797. Pitcher Mori Telemaco swings and fouls the ball off, so it's 0-1. Struck out in the third inning. We will randomly select a card each game. And if a man hits a home run or a grand slam, you win one of the prize packages. For official rules, send a self-addressed hand below to the address on the screen. Telemaco still batting. So in two, he puts the ball in play. It's an easy out. Espinosa almost running the ball to first base. So that'll do it for the Cubs. But here in the fourth they score for. We play for. And it's 6 1 Cubbies. Sports Channel's forecast for Thursday is Thunder. Thunder Road Thursdays. Rev up your engines. 
drop the flag, and throw the pedal to the metal. Because Sports Channel shifts into high gear with Thunder Road Thursday. From NASCAR to dirt, it's the very best in high-speed auto racing every Thursday night. So catch the lightning and listen for the thunder. Every Thursday night from 7 to 11, it's Thunder Road Thursday, only on Sports Channel. <laughs> well, Brent Maine leads it off for the Mets, pulls the ball to the right side. Sandberg boots it. E4. So the Mets have their leadoff man on here in the top of the fifth. We caught Bobby Jones between innings. Fred Hina, the head trainer with the Mets, working on his shoulder. You don't like it when you see a trainer working on a pitcher's shoulder. That was only the fifth error made by Sandberg this year. We mentioned earlier, as you look at Bobby Jones, and evidently he has a problem with that right arm. Sandberg, the best fielding percentage of any second baseman in the history of the game. He's an interesting study. He is a stabber as a fielder. And they teach you to always give with the ball. He has very stiff hands when he feels the ball, but it certainly works for him. Well, it's one and all right now. And then Gardner will find who popped up his first time up. And he fouls the ball back. One and one. Well, fans, it's the Mets half of the fifth inning, so it's time for the U.S. Air Sports Channel fifth inning contestant. And today's the Mets are batting for John Lazinski of Lake Hopachog, New Jersey, who could win a fabulous travel package courtesy of U.S. Air for today's game and for John to win a prize he needs a Mets home run for a grand slam during his fifth inning and the potential here is good. Alfonso just took ball two so it's two and one on Elgardo Alfonso. Clearly likes playing shortstop better than the other positions according to the averages. Hits when he drives a certain way to the ballpark. And there's a base hit in the left center field. Maine will head for third. Alfonso holds it first, so we'll see if the error comes back to haunt the Cubbies. Alfonso 0 for 7 in the series before that base hit right there. And the Mets have a chance to get back in this game. But they do have the bottom part of the batting order coming up. The Mets could go to a pinch hitter for Jones, but they have no one throwing in the bullpen, although the Cubs have someone throwing in their bullpen. Of course, on a day like today, as you see Andy Tomerlin in the on deck circle, you can get warm by combing your hair. Mm, boy. We talked about the young pitcher. He is surrounded by his teammates and the manager of the Cubs. Big outing for Telemaco. Mentioned it a few moments ago. He has to show the Cubs he belongs pitching in the rotation here in the major leagues. One thing he doesn't do, he doesn't walk any batters. Or if he does walk some batters, it's about two per nine innings. He has not walked anyone in this game. He has struck out two. He's given up just three hits, but they're very nervous as they have that action going. One of those hits, an infield hit by Ray Ordonez. Bottom field throwing in there with Cassian. Ordonez takes outside. 1 0. Ray Ordonez. Struggling with the bat, according to the stat. Brent Main leading off third over at first. Edgardo Alfonso. Adonis pops the ball up down the left field line. Gonzalez comes over and makes the grab. Main tagging the throw to the plate. They got him. So it went Gonzalez to her knee. To service 
And Alfonso holding his ground at first base. Well, a bad base running mistake made by the Mets here and compounded by the fact that the runner at first base, Alfonso, didn't tag up and go down to second on the play at the plate. Alfonso halfway in this ball and not able to go down to second as they pick up the double play on the fly ball and the relay throw from the shortstop Hernandez to service the catcher for the out. And here is Maine going back to the bag. That looks like he even thinks he's going to go and try and score, but he is given the goal by the third base coach, Mike Cubbage, and the play is made. And time to just fly out to center field. That will do it for the Mets. Here in the top of the fifth, they feel a score. They strand the runner. We played four and a half here at Wrigley Field, and it's six to one in the Modell scoreboard. Well, back here at Wrigley Field, Bobby Jones leaving the ball game with a strain to right shoulder. Here's the BP replay. Ralph? Ordonia is the batter, hits a short fly ball to left field. Nobody out before the catch. Now the catch makes it one out. The runner on third base. Redmain trying to score and a bad decision by Mike Cubbage, the third base coach, and Maine is out easily at home plate. I think Gonzalez assumed Maine wasn't going to run because he threw the ball only a few feet to the cutoff man and alertly Hernandez looking to the plate made the throw because Gonzalez didn't throw the ball that far to hit the cutoff man. So the Mets lose a chance to have an inning and they still trail by a score of six to one. Scott Bullitt leads it off and drives the ball into right field. Chris Jones moving over, makes the grab. And a new pitcher in the game for the Mets, Paul Bird taking over. Bird relieving Bobby Jones, who went out with a slight shoulder sprain. Bird one and two in the year with no saves, a number on average of 4.05. He's worked 26 and two-thirds innings. And he gets his first man, Scott Bullitt, on a fly ball to right. And the batter now with one man out here in the bottom of the fifth inning will be Ryan Sandberg, who back in 1990 hit 40 home runs as a second baseman. He takes ball one. The record is 42 by Rogers Hornsby and Davey Johnson for home runs by a second baseman. Johnson actually hit 43 home runs that year, but one came as a pinch hitter. Sandberg fouls it off of the check swing, so it's one and one. Well, back in 1987 for the Cubbies, Andre Dawson hit 49, went on to become the most valuable player in the National League, and I believe the Cubs ended up in last place, Ralph. Andre Dawson probably playing his last year in the yeah. Major Leagues this year. He announces retirement. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch to Sandberg, and he pops the ball up. Right center field, Chris Jones calling for it, and makes the grab. Two down. Actually, when they announce their retirement, you can't really be that sure. He might come back. <laughs> Of course, Ryan Sandberg, who just popped out, he announced his retirement, and he's playing. Michael Jordan, what a magnificent comeback. And Mark Grace will be the batter. By the way, while we have a moment, I want to send along best wishes to Kevin McCorkle, who's known as Icky at Shea Stadium. He was in a car accident back in New York. This Grace takes ball one. We're pulling for him. He's in the Good Samaritan Hospital in West Islip, New York. And he's a favorite. He works with Charlie Samuel in the clubhouse. He's a favorite with the players. The players all wanted to pass along best wishes to Icky. So go get him, Icky. We'll see you back at Chase Stadium when the Mets come off the road. They need you. One and one on Mark Grace. He's one for two, and he takes inside. So now it's two and one. Grace flied out his first time up and singled. In the fourth. It's amazing the Cubs don't sign into a long term deal, Ralph. It's always a battle contract wise for Mark Race. Is it because of the lack of home runs? Because he's always hitting 300. He hits a lot of extra base hits, mainly two base hits. Last year at 51 doubles. And he just took ball four. So Grace goes to first. And that will bring up the leading home run hitter in the major leagues, along with Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. 
Hit a long home run his first time up in the first inning. Then he flied out in the fourth. Speaking of most valuable players, is he a candidate? The only thing that might take away some of the votes, he's certainly having that kind of a year, is the fact that Cubs will probably not win, although they started their action pretty good contention. They're four and a half games back of Houston and St. Louis. Houston and St. Louis time for the lead in the Central Division. Andre Dawson won it on the last place club. Ernie Banks won it back to back. Banks are one of the last place club too. But the game is changing. They're voting differently. But if Sosa does go on and win the MVP, he'll be one of a, a select few to win an MVP award in the in his league and not make the All-Star team. Mark Gray's leading off first. Sosa fouls it back. I want to thank you, New York and New Jersey, for making Coors Light the number one light beer. Now we were talking about Sammy Sosa and his quest to be the National League all-time home run leader for a single season. He's on the pace to hit 56. The record is 56 by Hack Wilson. Sosa pulls it to Ordonius. He goes a second to the force, and that'll do it for the Cubbies. And after five innings of play here at Wrigley Field, it's been all Cubs. And we'll show you the Modell scoreboard. When you see the Modell scoreboard, you're going to see of six. That's one. Mets Baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by U.S. Air, the airline with nearly 5,000 flights a day. Well, there's a score as Telemaco's first pitch to Lance Johnson is a ball. So 1-0 on Lance Johnson, who's had, who's had a home run in his game. He's 1-2. for two. He takes a strike in the inside corner. 1-1. One one. How about this guy right here? He's trying to break in, Ralph. He's not going to be very lucky right there. <laughs> <laughs> but he's trying to pay him off. There's a drive to right field. Sosa going back, looking up. Home run number two in this game for Lance Johnson. When Lance Johnson comes to the plate, the, the third baseman moves in on the grass. Rarely does Lance Johnson bunt for a base hit, but in this game he has two solo home runs. And his first multiple home run game for the New York Mets and he has accounted for the two runs the Mets have and that might be the last pitch that Tamako Telemaco will be throwing in this game. Well Frankie Jenkins going out to talk to the right hand. And while we have a moment I want to remind you nobody, nobody beats the Wiz announces the grand opening of their new mega store on 5th Avenue and 46th Street. Come by and meet Phil Sims, Patrick Ewing, Joan Namath, and Olympic swimmer Janet Evans. That's Nobody Beats the Wiz grand opening Friday, August 8th and Saturday, August 9th. Well, Lance Johnson, two home runs in this game. He might hit three. Darryl Strawberry hit three last night in New York. Hard hit ball to Gomez. Flips to Grace. Five to three. One down. Matt Lachlan, there's our man. He's in the scoreboard here at Wrigley Field. I'm telling you, you get to travel to some great places when you're up here in Chicago. I feel like the Wizard of Oz, by the way. Go away, go away. I'm going to talk to Daryl. He's one of the <laughs> scoreboard operators here. Daryl, how long have you been doing this? About four years now. And what do you like about it? I'm just watching the games and uh, seeing all the good plays the Cubs make and a lot of good players out there. I like just watching baseball, basically. Now, are you responsible for fine score the hits what do you do I'm just a hit man and the uh, American <laughs> League side Sox game and the one above that I'm sitting next to a hit man guys <laughs> help me out <laughs> and Bernard Gilkey he takes a ball so it's one and one there's the score but nobody has ever hit that scoreboard with a batted ball up high to Gilkey two and one Ralph you played here what went wrong there you well, that scoreboard's a long way at it there was one ball hit over the top of that scoreboard. As Gilkey hits a rope in the center field, base hit. And that ball was hit over the top of the scoreboard by Sam Sneed, <laughs> the golfer, and he hit a golf ball off of home plate or the area around home plate over the top of that scoreboard with a two iron. 
I believe somebody hit the ball to the left of the scoreboard, and I want to say Orlando Cepeda. I think it was Roberto Comini, and uh, I know I hit one that went to the left of the scoreboard in between the camera and the scoreboard, about, uh, oh, maybe halfway between the camera location and the scoreboard off a fellow named Chipman. That's going to be all for the starting pitcher. Well, Cubs fans giving him a round of applause as he leaves the ball game. So with that pitching change, we're going to step away. And this call to the bullpen is sponsored by a 9X. Well, Saturday night right here on Sports Channel, the Mets and the Marlins. First pitch, 7 o'clock, our game time. The free game show starts at 6.30. And here we have a pitching change. Turk Wendell on in relief for the Cubs. He's facing Chris Jones, and he throws a fastball as Gilkey goes to second base with a stolen base. Gilkey doing it all for the Mets this season. And a good time to steal on the very first pitch by the new pitcher, and he got a good jump and got the stolen base his 14th of the year in 20 attempts. You see the good jump there. Scott Serve has no chance to get it. Sandberg taking the throw. And it's 0 and 1 on Chris Jones. Window wants to talk to service. Turk Window from the beautiful area of the Berkshires in around Pittsfield, Massachusetts. He's quite a character. When he used to go to the mound, he wouldn't throw the first pitch. He'd wave at the center fielder and he wouldn't throw his first pitch until the center fielder waved back. He used to brush his teeth after every inning in the dugout. So you put him in there with the characters, wouldn't you? Oh, boy. I don't like that up in the Berkshires. Fouled off. In fact, a lot of New Yorkers, a lot of New Yorkers have uh, some homes up there in the Berkshires. They go up and relax. In fact, a lot of them go up and watch the uh, Pittsfield Mets. Play at Wakona Park. Where Mark Belanger learned his baseball. And the 0-2 pitch to Chris Jones is up high, one and two. Originally selected by Atlanta. Inside. Two balls and two strikes and Chris Jones. The Atlanta Braves did very well in Massachusetts. They signed Tom Glavin, Mark Wallers, Turk Wendell. Two balls and two strikes on Chris Jones. Two pitches foul back. So we'll do it again at two and two. Ralph, now when you played here, did they have sellouts every day? Because when I was in Dubuque, Iowa, and A-ball, I used to watch the Cubs on TV, and they didn't sell out back then. They certainly didn't. It's like Fenway Park in Boston. Prior to 1967, they didn't sell out all the time. They sell out all the time now, but... Well, the Cubs have drawn well this year, but not as well as they have in the past. They've drawn a million six hundred and forty four thousand and change so far this year. They should reach the two million mark. When you think that the last time they played in the World Series was 51 years ago. These are the most loyal fans in baseball. You know what? Tinkers, Tinkers, and Chains. Trio Bear Club Cubs, fleeter than birds. <laughs> fleeter than bears. There's a line drive in the center field. Here comes Gilkey. He'll score easily. And now it's six to three. The Mets getting back into this game slowly, but getting the job done. You know, Ralph, we were talking about home runs before, how Sosa has a chance of catching Hack Wilson. 
Jim Regalman going out to make a pitching change, but I'll tell you, you look at Todd Humley. Here's a guy on a pace to hammer a lot of home runs. He has to take a day off. He needs a day off because of the laborious job of catching every day. So clearly catchers have it much more difficult than outfielders or infielders to lead the league in home runs. Agree? Well, the most home runs hit by a catcher, 40 by Roy Campanella. And Todd's going to get that record if he stays healthy. And speaking of Todd, one of the better horses on the Mets club is called to the bullpen is sponsored by Saratoga at Aqueduct. What a game. It certainly is, isn't it? <laughs> you think Abner Doubleday had this in mind when he invented the game of baseball? He's, that's what they say up in Cooperstown. Hey, how, how were the festivities? They were fantastic. It was uh, another delightful weekend, and uh, Jim Bunning going into the Hall of Fame certainly did a nice job, and uh, your old buddy Earl Weaver coming up with a trip to the Hall of Fame and now member of the Hall of Fame. Earl, a great manager as Luis Gonzalez is the batter. Doug Henry, the pitcher. Gonzalez one for two. He has a home run. We have a six to six game on a just absolutely gorgeous day at Wrigley Field. And Gonzalez picks up a base hit in the right field leading off here in the sixth inning. You know, Ralph, on your next trip to Cooperstown, maybe you should take that old third baseman next door with you. Introduce him to the troops up there. Ron Santo? Absolutely. Hall of Fame credentials. Boy, he's been overlooked for years. Well, he's uh, certainly a candidate. He had some great years here with the Chicago Cubs, Ron Santo. Of course, we remember him well in that 1969 battle with the Cubs for the Mets' first World's Championship. He would join Ernie Banks. Gabby Hartnett, Tinkers the Evers the Chance, Billy Williams, Fergie Jenkins. Billy and Fergie were both there at the Hall of Fame ceremonies. Outside to Mike Hubbard. They were taking a picture uh, of the Hall of Famers and Earl Weaver got into the front row and sat down in one of the seats and Reggie Jackson says you're a rookie up here get out of there <laughs> and he moved him right out of the front row they had to make him standing back Reggie loved playing for Earl Weaver Earl did not believe in the sacrifice punt. he believed in the three run home run did pretty well with that philosophy didn't he that is true the Cubs have used the two run home run to their advantage in this game three of them and the 1 0 pitch it's a ground ball is short should be a six four Three double play. Two down here in the bottom of the six. I see where Tom Seaver is pretty vocal about some of the Hall of Famers not showing up for the festivities. Well, a lot of the Hall of Famers don't come up there. But uh, and I've never really understood that it's one of the nicest weekends you could have and probably the most beautiful place that you could ever have ceremonies like that. But they did have a terrific turnout of Hall of Famers, but not all of them. Leo Gomez, the batter, he's one for two in his game. He has a home run. Ron Santa won number 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. The 0 1 pitch to Gomez, he fouls it back. It's 0 and 2 on the Cub third baseman who by the way Ron Santo is very high on. Last time I saw Waddy Ford he was trying to get into his automobile to drive home. The bellhop had locked his keys in the car. <laughs> I'd love to listen to Whitey. <laughs> I said 
asked at Joan Ford, his wife, I said, who did that, you? She says, thank God, not me. <laughs> <laughs> One and two on Gomez. One of the great scenes from Mets history involved Ron Santo, and here it is, Ralph. And this is Jerry Kuzman on the mound, and Santo gets drilled, and that came right after Bill Hands had drilled Tommy Agee. A little retaliation right there, and it changed the whole aspect of the pennant race right there. Well, it's two and two right now on Leo Gomez. Two men are out. We're in the bottom of the six. There's Ron Santa, Cubs broadcaster, outstanding third baseman, and should be in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Way inside, three and two on Gomez. That place up in Cooperstown is treated like a sanctuary by the players who have been inducted into it. California Angels played the Montreal Expos in the game there that they play on Monday. It was called a tie. And this is called a fly ball to left field. Guilty under it and makes the grab for out number three. Well, that'll do it for the Cubs. Here in the six, we play six at Wrigley. And we are all tied at six on the Modell scoreboard. It's been a real tough game for Bobby Jones. Yeah, how he's really struggling today. You know, I hate playing chess in front of you guys. The question most asked here at Sports Channel is where is Matty Lachlan? He's someplace here in Wrigley Field. He's, he's been evicted. Matty, where are you? Well, Fran, I'm actually I'm in a spot where I've really found a home. I'm very comfortable out here. I'm actually hoping somebody hits a home run. I want to chase after it. I've got my running shoes on. I'm ready to go. I've taken the shower earlier. I'm freshened up. I'm ready. Lance Johnson picks up a base hit to lead it off here in the seventh. And now, back in with the play-by-play. -play. He's been all over this ballpark. Also. Yeah. How he rolls. Tell you what, Matty keeps this act up. He's going to be in a home by the time the game's <laughs> over. I'll tell you, he'll be in jail. He just threw out of the scoreboard. Unreal. <laughs> no pride. The man has no pride whatsoever. No, Look at that. Hey, Matty, announce out there that you're the biggest Mets fan in the country. Well, you know, I would like to get home this evening after the game. So maybe we'll just... <laughs> yeah, do a little let's go bets. Let's go bets. God, even they don't want to pay attention to him anymore. They're sick of him. Six innings and 101 degree heat index, and they don't even want to acknowledge the existence of Matt Lachlan any longer. Got to acknowledge the existence of a brand new shiny one here at Wrigley Field. Six apiece. Mets go to work trying to break the tie with Johnson's leadoff single, his third hit. And so Espinosa will see what he can do about helping build the go ahead run. Butterfield almost nailed Johnson. Lance with 42 stolen bases lead the lead. And he was leaning to get him? No. He's bad. They say the toughest thing in a good base dealer is when he has to dive back in a lot. Tires him out. Takes away his aggressiveness. Best ball on the inside part. Espin Nothing in one. Espinosa taking and bringing the bat back towards the catcher. Giving Lance Jansen an opportunity to steal. Espinosa's fly to center twice and bounced to third, wanting to make sure with Mike Covich, the third base coach. How about Scott Service? He left the ball game with a contusion to the left jaw. Oh, they got Johnson. Johnson is out at first. He was leaning and Buttonfield snuffed him out. One man away. You talk about Hitman, you talk about snuffing people out. It's going to be a violent game. Here's a good move, and it gets Lance Johnson leaning the other way. He slipped. He was leaning, then he slipped and couldn't get back. So Lance Johnson picked off. You see the lean in the, the dirt gave as he tried that back. He's safe. But it sounded good. Well, he's wearing some of Wrigley Field on his uniform, but... They'll take a seat on the bench now with one out here in the seventh. And two and one to Alvaro Espinosa. Bottom field featuring a good fastball. Oh, 
heat index here in Chicago now at 102 degrees. So with a wind chill factor, it only feels 101. <laughs> you know, this is nothing. Playing in Kansas City, you, you played this stuff early evening. He played on net on the artificial turf with it. Oh, let me tell you, too. we used to play in the afternoon, Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon, and it would be hot. They would have nine pails of ice, and the regulars would go into the tunnel and stand in the ice, and they'd have a conversation while they were standing in there. <laughs> Ripped down the left field line by Espinosa. Gonzalez hustling, trying to hold Espinosa to a single. And Espinosa had stopped and now will go back, even though the ball gets loose. So Espinosa gets the base hit, but with Johnson picked off, all it means is an exchange of base runners with one away. And Espinosa, not nearly as fast as Johnson. And Gonzalez get over to the ball in a hurry, which stopped Espinosa from trying to stretch it into a double. Watch this. Watch Gonzalez get over there. Boom. Now that just stops the runner right there. Throw is insignificant. Gonzalez has been struggling defensively this year, but what he did, what the thing that stopped Espinosa was the hustle of Gonzalez getting to the ball. Nothing and one to Bernard Gilkey. Bernard one for three, stole a base, came around to score in the sixth inning. And the Mets scored five times to get this baby even, which is where we're at right now, at six apiece. That's with 11 hits in the Cubs' seventh. Bobby Jones with his right shoulder strain off the hook as far as a loss is concerned. Espinosa not a fast base runner, but will they put the hit and run on here with Gilkey? Not on this pitch, and it's ripped fair ball down the line. Espinosa's going to challenge Gonzalez, who only gets to it now. Gilkey trying for second, and he's in standing up. Three straight hits off of Bottenfield by the Mets here in the seventh. They haven't broken the tie yet, but they now have runners at second and third with one out. And Chris Jones, the scheduled hitter. Well, when you lead off first base, the ball is hit. It's hit in front of you. This is your decision. You don't rely on the coach. He said, I can make it, and he did. And Jokey went into second base standing up. So Alvaro Espinosa showing the wear and tear of an afternoon at Wrigley Field with a 100-degree-plus heat index. Now the Cubs will have to bring the infield in. Chris Jones. Six six here in the seventh inning and a breaking ball for a strike. Chris with that RBI single in the sixth inning and coming off of Turk Wendell. He was the only hitter that Wendell faced. But field the fourth pitcher used by Jim Riggleman and nothing doing right now in the Chicago bullpen. Check swing. Todd Huntley had a duck in the Mets dugout. Clip ducked. I think he got out of out of the way, but it's like a little concern in the Mets dugout there. <laughs> Robert Person. He's got the trainer with him. That's handy. What to do? Hit him in the show. You believe that? Well. If they start doing that, you get a problem. 0 2 to Jones, sails upstairs. Well, that's Formula 409, and he's doing some light house cleaning here. He's using it to stay cool. I hope it's not water. Why not? It looks, it looks like it's dirty water. <laughs> Ball and two strikes on Jones. Espinosa leading from third and Gilkey from second. With one out here in the seventh. That's we're down by five. They're trying to break a tie. And again, a check swing by Jones, but that one missed the dugout.
Espinosa took a little dash off of third base trying to distract the pitcher, Kent Bottenfield. Came about a third of the way down the line before he stopped. He caught my attention. Once you're in a stretch position, though, it, it won't bother you as a pitcher. It's impossible to steal home. And you see Bottenfield from the stretch. Little looper, but that'll go foul. And the duel continues. Here in Chicago for the Cubs this year, Brian McRae stole home, straight steal home. Jeff King with the Pirates did it. Two other guys did it in the National League. Well, we saw Reggie Sanders do it Reggie against the Sanders Mets. Too, yeah. Against Mark Clark, who worked from a full windup. He had a big lead at the time at five to nothing. Still one and two on Jones. The infield in. And time call. Remember Mark Hubbard did not start this game behind the plate. You notice that shot that uh, Scott Service took. A little similar to the one that Todd Hundley took from Brian McCray the other night except Hundley had his mask yeah, on. We talked about the uh, the mask off when Service was blocking the plate. And how he when I know when I was a kid they taught us as soon as the ball to take the mask and get it out of the way so the, the runner won't slide into it. He won't get hurt. Now I think about it, I'd have left it in, home, in front of home plate. <laughs> <laughs> One, two to Jones. Up the middle off of Bottenfield who holds the runner. Now why doesn't Espinosa try to score? Well, he probably couldn't pick up that ball. I hope that's the reason because he'd have scored easily. In fact, I'm sure Bottenfield wouldn't even look. He would just assume the runner's going to score. He's going to get the sure out. So the Cubs catch a break, and Jones is not happy with Espinosa's inability to score on that ball. Again, this is Espinosa's call, but the ball's in front of him. Well, well Bonfield took a quick glance. He took a quick glance. That was good, uh, good play on Bonfield's part. Turns out to be decent base running by Espinosa. Even as far as that ball rolled away from him? Well, if you if they take a look at it again, Bonfield took a look. Now, maybe that was the deterrent, that he did take the look at Espinosa. Roberto Pettigini now with two out runners at second and third takes ball one. But even if Bottenfield comes up with that ball, he's got to make an off balance throw to get Espinosa. You know, if we take a look at it again, uh, you'll see Bottenfield look. And you know what? This could be a deterrent. As soon as he looks, now, now he's telling Espinosa, I know you're there. I might see. I might throw to the plate. It would have been a bang bang play to play. Espinosa doesn't have real good speed. Off speed, 2-0 oh, to Pettigini. Well, take a look at it again. You'll see him stop. As soon as Bottenfield looked, he stopped. If Bottenfield doesn't look, I believe Espinosa goes. See, frozen with a look, huh? There it is. Should be a movie. How about that for a movie? Frozen with a look. Anything frozen, I'll go for today. <laughs> you see where he looked? And Espinosa held on. If Espinosa breaks right away, yeah. I'm cracking the bat, he scores. Popped up into short left by Pettigini. And it drifts back a little further than I thought, but right to where Gonzalez figured. And the Mets do not score despite three hits in the seventh inning. They lead to seventh inning stretch time at Wrigley Field. And on the Modell scoreboard, we're all even at six. Funny, that didn't sound like Matt, that last part. <laughs> Matt's into this, isn't he? Well, we're back here. Mets and Cubbies tied up. And you know what you do between the top of the seventh and the bottom of the seventh? You sing, take me out to the ballgame. I got all my friends here in the bleachers up and singing. Well, we had a really good time. Yeah, it looks like they really love you, Matt. They do. They're all over you. They do. You may not talk to me the rest of the way, but I got some <laughs> friends for life out here. That'd Howie. be guilt by association. <laughs> Here's Jose Hernandez taking a strike from Doug Henry, starting his second inning of work. 
6-6 after the Mets waste a chance in the top of the seventh. This one drifting towards the line. Jones didn't find it right away. And Hernandez is on his way to second. See how they score that with the go-ahead run is in scoring position with nobody out. Chris Jones was blinded by the lights. Unable to make the catch. Watch this. He's in pursuit fighting the sun. You see the glove up there? Boom. The glass mid ball hits in and bounces out. And it scored an error. And properly so. Now the Chicago Cubs will go to their bench. Ray Sanchez will be the pinch hitter. Sanchez, the regular shortstop. Let's say Hernandez trying to lay claim to that job now. Jose. So Ray Sanchez has been bothered by a bad hand, which had him on the disabled list earlier this season. We'll see what he can do about getting Gonzalez a little closer, not bringing him around. Or Hernandez, I should say. to a hit once the ball giving himself up and I mean he was flat footed that pitch up and in but he got the bat on it great job by Sanchez and Hernandez is now at third base with one out they say the toughest thing to do is bunt a high fastball way inside also there's the high fastball way inside it overpowered Sanchez and Espinosa looking at third base. I think it has to be a joke because he knows nobody's at third base. Unless Tony Muser, the third base coach, <laughs> wants to take it. Grab a glove, Tony. So 5 4 on the sacrifice. Now the Mets have to bring the infield in for Scott Bullock. And a strike on the inside corner. 6 apiece. With the Cubs trying to break that tie here, Bullet 0 for 3 in this game. But he's had three doubles in this series against the Mets. Hot field deep, infield tight. Off the inside corner, 1 and 1. I don't know about that official scoring change. But ball hit by Hernandez, <laughs> calling it a double now before I, I thought that was an error all the way <laughs> two and one you know how we uh, the Cubs have used a lot of pitchers in this ball game consequently they, they're not sending pitches to the plate to punt they send up uh, a utility player a guy that's sitting on the bench to sacrifice because they've used so many players in this game so once you start getting into the bullpen early and often it just makes a manager manage in a different style Three balls and a strike to Bullet. Jim Riggleman. Apparently the higher ups in the Cubs organization a little restless about the work of Jim Riggleman. Oh, very high on him. Very high. Outside ball four. There's some conflicting things. Some of the People at the Tribune Company were quoted recently as saying things that led the uh, people to think they're a little impatient with them. Thought really? Yeah. Jeez, I was talking to some guys up here in the press room earlier and then down in the field, and they, they were pretty high on them. Oh, he is. That's Andy I'll, McPhail, the president I'll of the I'll tell you, club. Ron Santo uh, said some great things about Raymond, and so did Eddie Lynch. That was like a picture, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy McPhail? Portrait of Andy. <laughs> Did somebody ever do that? Look at it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> he has his own picture up in his suite. Right now, the Cubs with runners at the corners for Ryan Sandberg. So the Mets pull the infield back at short and second, looking for two, and it's fouled back by Ryan. This telecast is brought to you in part by Bud Light, official sponsor of the 1996 Summer Olympic Games. They get a Bud Light. Singled and scored in the first inning. Jay Hernandez measuring his lead against Henry. 
Well, it with good speed, the runner at first. The Cubs put a play on here. Throw is in the dirt, and a pretty good job by Pettigini. Yeah, quick move and down in the dirt. Pettigini with those soft hands and the big glove. That field deep and around towards left on Sandberg. And Henry with a step off. Cubs trying to get the go-ahead run here and sweep a three-game series for the first time this year. Henry hopes this is the one and eleven. And it's fouled back so quickly. Doug Henry in front, nothing and two. Mark Grace on deck. I'd love to get a ground ball from Sandberg here. Behind Grace is Sammy Sosa. They say Sandberg has been struggling as far as driving in key runs for the Cubs this year. Of course, he had the year layoff. On the outside corner, and Sandberg is gone. First strikeout for Henry, and it's a king-size K. Mark Grace will be the hitter. And a good pitch from Henry. Right on the black. Sandberg's reaction. Good pitcher's pitch. Sandberg knew it, but Henry knows that he's got a tough customer in Grace, who's one for two with a walk. Race five out of nine in this series against the Mets. Nothing in one. Cubs have only left one man on base through the first six. They've got two on the pond here in the seventh with two out. Strike two. And quickly, Henry in front of Grace, 0 and two. Grace is usually a tough man to strike out. And you see the batting average. He uses the whole field. Not considered a huge RBI man. That's protected on that two strike pitch and slapped it foul. Just staying alive. He had the 70s the other night. He had the 70s and was staying alive. Wasn't staying alive in the 70s? Or was that yeah, the it was staying alive. And it's a miracle Matt Lachlan was able to do that after parading around in the outfit that. He sported on mm -hmm. Monday night. Oh, and two to Grace. Two on, two out. Tie ball game in the seventh. Wind continues to blow out here at Wrigley. Comes to hit three home runs today. Was not the one time in 2306 that that play works. <laughs> and the 0 2. Waste pitch away. Wanted to see if Grace would chase a bad one. Turned out to be a pretty good ball game. The Mets were getting clobbered and they fought back. That's scoring five runs in the top of the sixth inning. Lance Johnson's hit two home runs for New York today. Five home runs in all here at Wrigley with the wind blowing out. And the one two. Check swing. Did he go? No, says Brian Gorman. So the count even now on a very dangerous hitter. Played his college ball at San Diego State. They taught those guys how to hit at that count. Tony Gwynn went to that school. Good to see Tony Gwynn back in the yeah. Padres lineup. And the 2 2 will have to wait a second as Henry continues his preoccupation with keeping Bullet close at first.
Looks like Doug wants Brent Maine to go through those signs one more time. Now he's got him. And the 2-2. Got him! Doug Henry gets Sandberg and Grace on strikes with the go-ahead run at third. And the Mets wriggle out of the inning. No runs, a hit, a walk, and two left. Seven in the books here at Wrigley Field. It's the Mets six and the Cubs six. Mets baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by your tri-state Ford dealer who has five of the top ten cars and counting best sellers. So why aren't you driving a Ford? And by Met Life. Get Met. It pays. Mm. Looks like some clouds moving in over Wrigley Field. And this guy is all set just in case we get a little rain. Might want to pass that along to Matty. It's about the only piece of gear we haven't seen him sport lately is an umbrella. Considering that he appeared to have one surgically attached over the first three months of the season, <laughs> one would expect him to pull out the old Matty Poppins routine. That's what we ought to see. Matty, just go up to that guy. Just grab the umbrella right <laughs> from him. That'd be keeping in character. And here's Terry Adams, who becomes the fifth Cubs pitcher of the afternoon. Adams has pitched scoreless baseball over his last eight appearances, totaling 13 scoreless innings. Brent Main leads off, takes ball one on a fastball. Main's had a busy afternoon. He's been thrown out at the place twice, going one for three. And that's low, two balls and no strikes. Here's a 2-0, Maine taking all the way or so it would appear. Looks at strike one. What happens when a catcher goes after a catcher the way Maine did the Scott service? You guys take away his union card? It becomes an afterthought. You think about it after, why not do that? <laughs> Looper over short, base hit for Maine. And the go-ahead run is on as Brent Maine picks up his second hit of the afternoon. Brent Maine really doing the job this year for the Mets. He's coming out of the game. The Mets love a pinch runner. Tim Bogart, Todd Hundley getting loose in the bullpen. That sounds good, doesn't it? Todd Hundley's getting loose. Well, perhaps Todd's going to make a pitching appearance this afternoon. Doubtful. Hey, you wonder if Brent Maine scored both times he tried, would he be still in the ball game running? Now I think they're looking for the right time to get Hundley's bat in there, pull the old double switch, get towards the bottom of the order. Get some better speed with Bogart. Now the question is, will Alfonso try to bunt him up? Gomez thinks so. He's on the grass at third. He shows bunt. Drops it down. They might have had a play at second, but yeah. Adams plays it safely. Gets the first out. Now on that play, Hubbard, the catcher, was going down towards third base. He's got to get out in that infield and call the play. He left Adams up to himself. He said, look, you're going to have to do it on your own. And he went to first base. He did have a shot at second. Here it is again. Adams charges, fields the ball. For a moment, looked at second. But he had a shot at Bogart second base. But that's got to be the catcher's call. If you're going to go to second base, it's got to be on the catcher's recommendation. So Ray Ordonez with two out of three. See what he could do about bringing Bogar in from second. Slider away, ball one. Ordonez average slipping under 260 for the first time this year. But he's gained three points with that two for three this afternoon. And you see Todd on deck now as a pinch hitter. That's ball two and an interesting potential call coming up here. If Ordonia should get on, well, obviously you got to pitch to Hunley. But if he doesn't, first base remains open. Ordinarily, you might say, all right, let's put him on. But Lance Johnson has three hits and two home runs, and he's batting first. And I, I would pitch to Todd Hunley, even though Todd has the power to hit the ball out. You don't want to face a guy who has two home runs in the ball game and a single. He's very relaxed at the plate. I'm a big believer in that. I know that's really going from the gut. But if a guy has a couple hits in the game and he has a home run, he's going to be more relaxed at the plate than at any time during the game. 
How about a gutsy move, which some will call almost absurd, but I think it's pretty provocative, made by Ray Knight last night. If you didn't hear about it, I'll tell you right after this pitch to Ordonez. It's two and one. Little number, and Gomez can't come up with it. Ordonez was on, or is on, with a base hit. They give him an infield hit, his third of the game. Now the Mets have runners at the corners, and they'll have to pitch to Hundley. Well, for a guy who makes contact, it's difficult to strike out. Ordonez is somewhat of a streak hitter. As Gomez has trouble coming up with that ball beer handed. That was his only shot. But Ordonez makes contact, and usually when you make contact, you're not that streaky. You don't have the, the hot and the cold, but Ordonez so far this year has shown us a streak in him, whether it's negative or positive, and yet he makes contact. Yesterday, Ray Knight, the manager of the Reds, saw his team go ahead of the Giants and Rod Beck 3-2. to two. So going to the bottom of the ninth, the candlestick, Barry Bonds was the leadoff hitter. Knight walked him intentionally. Well, Barry Bonds has been complaining all year, and I, I, I'm kind of surprised he's doing the complaining that he needs some help around him. I'm surprised it's not somebody else in the ball club saying we need to help Barry out. Well, this is where the Mets want to be with the go-ahead run 90 feet away, and their leading RBI man, Todd Hundley at the plate. Hundley tied for fourth in the league with 90 ribbies. And a fastball away, ball one. Hundley batting for Doug Henry. Ron Santo was telling me before the ball game, Randy Hundley used to take Todd to those fantasy camps that he used to run and have made, you know, some of those great hitters from days gone by working with Todd. Outside 2 and 0. Oh. In fact, the idea for the fantasy camp was Randy Hundley's. He started it off. I think what happened to Todd was he just got strong. He's got good fundamentals, not only as a catcher, but also as a hitter. He's been around a lot of great players. You know, you know what else he was telling me is that he learned as a 10-year-old not to be afraid of the baseball as a catcher from catching Lee Smith, who was coming up in the Cubs organization. Randy Hundley was managing at Midland, the Texas League. And Todd would hang out with his dad. Lee Smith obviously taking something off of his 90 plus fastball throwing about 85 and at the age of 10 Todd handled it pretty well. Mm. Let's see what he does here on 2 and 0. Oh. Uh oh this could be two. There's one and a double play turned by the Cubs and the Mets don't score. That was not according to the script the Dallas Green plan. It was supposed to be a fly ball at worst which would get the go ahead run in. The 4-6-3 double play takes us to the bottom of the eighth, all even at six. Mets baseball on Sports Channel is brought to you in part by Budweiser, official sponsor of the 1996 Summer Games. This Bud's for you. So the clouds continue to hover over Wrigley Field, and whereas it looked like each team over the last three at-bats would have an opportunity to break a 6-6 tie, we're still even. And Jerry DePoto will become... Fourth Mets pitcher of the afternoon. Yeah, the first game uh, in this series, DePoto came in the ball game and just didn't have a good sinker. We saw Brian McRae lift his fastball and hit it over that left center field fence. Now you got Sammy Sosa leading off this inning. So in order for DePoto to be effective, he's got to get that ball to run down. His best pitch is when he's running the fastball down and in. You see the five and one record. He's pitched 50 innings so far for the Mets. He's been coming on strong lately. He threw a pitch that Sammy Sosa deposited into an apartment beyond the left field fence, breaking a window back in May, which gave the Cubs a win. Todd Hundley now behind the plate on the double switch. Somebody say it's raining out in the bleachers there? Is that what we hear? Rain. I don't see any umbrellas going up yet. I don't think the. Oh, I see rain now. Yeah, it's raining. Yeah, it is raining out here. The, the clouds are blowing in from uh, the outfield fence here. And uh, actually, it feels kind of good right now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Nothing in one on Sosa. Matty, we'll try to get you the seat location of the guy with that little umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, because I'm going to need it in a while. It's picked up a little bit, fellas. Slider away, a ball and a strike. Sosa with a two-run homer in the first, number 39 on the year. He has 95 runs batted in. There's one of those models. Giving up your umbrella for a young lady. Chivalry is not dead. Sosa pops it up. Ordonia's out. Johnson in. And Johnson makes the catch. One away. The Reader's Digest version of this game can be seen tonight at 11 o'clock. Sports Channel Light. How to make it to the game when you can't make the game. Monte Bryant will be your host. We'll condense this package down to a neat little half-hour situation for you. Luis Gonzalez with two out of three, including a home run. See what he can do against Jerry DePoto. Whack foul. Gonzalez always a real good Wrigley field hitter. One of the reasons the Cubs went out and got him last year from the Houston Astros. That happens a lot. You play well against a certain club and the club trades for you. 309 hitter lifetime in this ballpark. Came along with Scott Service from Houston for Rick Wilkins. Problem is you're not facing the Cubs pitchers now. You're playing with them. Like what Casey Stengel said in the early days of the Mets, he was asked how long would it take for the Mets to become respectable. He said as soon as we could spread enough of our players around the rest of the <laughs> league. I'll check it at third, but no swing, and it's one and one on Gonzalez. Last of the eight, six apiece. The Cubs had a six to one lead. Mets got five in the sixth inning to get even. Two balls and a strike. Mets will head from here to Florida to begin a four-game series with the Marlins tomorrow night. We'll have Saturday night's game for you here on Sports Channel. Two and two now on Gonzalez. Just where you want to go to cool off, huh, Frank? That's right, Florida. Looking forward to seeing those Marlins, Gary Sheffield, and the troops. And the 2-2 to Gonzalez. Nothing but air. First strikeout for DePoto. Two men away and Mike Hubbard, the scheduled hitter. Well, DePoto was, watch that fastball through a right by Gonzalez. That was not the sinker. He dipped that ball across the seams. That ball was rising. Got a good strong arm, Jerry DePoto. Odo's 38th appearance of the year. Trying to maintain the consistency which he's begun to show over the last month. He was basically the forgotten man in the bullpen for about two months really after that Sosa home run in May. Since the All-Star break, he's been effective. Deep to left. Back goes Gilkey to the wall. That's a goner. So much for that effectiveness. It's seven to six Cubs. So Brent May might have done the Cubs a favor. A collision at the plate. Scott Service driven out of the game with an injury. Hubbard comes in, takes over, and he might be the hero. So the first major league home run for Mike Hubbard put Chicago in front. And only three outs to go for the Mets. Leo Gomez looks at ball one. Whack foul. Count even. Only the fourth home run allowed by DePoto, but Matt Lachlan has the guy who caught it. Well, actually, he did a nice, uh, <laughs> turn, nice turn of... Uh, of uh, fate as he turned around and gave the ball to a young lady here who joined the game. But congratulations. So what's it feel like to catch a home run ball here? The best. Wrigley Field. 
bottom of the game. We're looking like we're going to win this one now. You ever, did you ever catch one before? No, it's the first time. Now, how come you didn't throw it back? Because I guess you get tickets to an upcoming game if you do. There's some sort of a promotion. Against, if it's from the other team, you throw it back in. Uh, she decided to give it away, and she's the recipient, fellas. Now, Gomez, the recipient of his second hit of the game. He'd also home it earlier, and now with two out, Cubs have an insurance run aboard, and Jose Hernandez will be the batter. Every time it looks like he's getting straightened out, Fran, someone like Mike Hubbard comes along. Yeah, and you, again, take a look at Mike Hubbard. He was in the bullpen when the game started, and he was supposed to be in the bullpen when the game ended, but Scott Service was knocked out by Brent Main, a collision at home plate, Main taking Service out of the game, Hubbard coming into the game, and hitting a big home run for the Cubs. Jerry DePoto struggling right now. Hernandez was charitably given a double his last time up when Chris Jones dropped the fly ball. Want to know Jones was fighting the sun got there pretty well had the ball in his web but it bounced out. Greg Pavlik going out now to talk to Jerry DePoto and try to calm him down. I think as a pitching coach, you have to be very careful after a pitcher gives up a home run. Somebody's got to count the pitcher down, whether it's the catcher or the pitching coach, but somebody's got to get out there. How much does it really help? I mean, is it just to break the tempo? Yeah, or? that's all. And, and get their mind off that home run because it's almost like it's amazing to take a look at some of the, the faces after they give up a home run. It's like a state of shock. When you go out, if you can say something to get their mind off it, even maybe something humorous, although they're not in a laughing mood. Just to, to break the tension. It doesn't bother a pitcher to walk the hitter. It drives him crazy if he gives up a home run. It's almost like the ultimate insult. Fouled off by Hernandez. It's one and one. You want to look ahead to the ninth. The Mets will be scheduled to send up the top of their order. Lance Johnson, Alvaro Espinosa, and Bernard Gilkey. Keep in mind Johnson with three hits including two home runs. Two and one. And we want to send along our best wishes for a speedy recovery to Kevin Mercarella, affectionately known around Shea Stadium as Icky. Icky handles the visiting clubhouse. He's in Good Samaritan Hospital in West Islip. He's pretty banged up, I understand, yeah. in a car accident. Dallas Green and Pete Hornish and John Franco wanted to make sure that Icky knows that Mets are pulling for him. All the players, he's very popular with the players. Two balls and two strikes. You see him in the clubhouse, and he's he always ends up taking some good, some ribbing from the players, and he loves it. You see him at the ballpark. He works in, works with Charlie Samuel, but does most of his work in the visiting clubhouse. And a terrific young man, and I know the Mets are hoping to see him back at Shea Stadium when they come off the road. Still two and two on Hernandez. Terry Adams is the Cubs pitcher. He's on deck. Although Bob Patterson, a left-hander, who has been outstanding lately, is throwing in the bullpen now for the Cubs. Here's the two-two. Mm. Got him. But the damage is done. One run on the Hubbard home run. Two hits and one left. Last licks for the Mets here at Wrigley Field. It's the Cubs seven and the Mets six. We go to the ninth inning here in Chicago. In the sixth inning, the game might have turned to the Cubs' favor, friend, even though they didn't know it at the time. Watch Scott Service. No mask on. Brent Main makes contact with the elbow into the uh, face. And here's what Mike Hubbard, who came on to take over the catching chores in this game for the Cubs, did. Look at this, a home run. So Mike Hubbard might be the player of the game. Giving away our post-game awards there. Mm -hmm. Little hints. Sorry about that. No, we haven't now. We haven't voted yet. I mean, this is a democratic society. Got to get all 275 <laughs> participants, constituents in. Lance Johnson making a case for that. 
takes a strike. Lance oh. is saying, now wait a minute, I got three hits and two homers here. And the third baseman is in on the grass again. You have to do it against Lance. He might bunt, but not in this case. Nobody chopped it over the head of Gomez. Johnson around first. He's going to try for second, and Johnson's in there. He didn't bunt, but he pulled the old butcher boy routine, and the tying runs in scoring position with nobody out. Now, he took a shot at left field. He did not come up to the plate to try to do anything else. He took a shot at hitting the ball the other way, and boy, was he successful. He got the good bounce. Here it is, Johnson with the third baseman in. Look at that. Hit the ball behind him to get it over Gomez's head. I'll tell you what, this guy has a magic wand, this Lance Johnson. Two home runs, two other hits, four hits in his game. That's why they call him one dog. Espinoza showed bunt, pulled it back, 1-0. Johnson now has 153 hits. Gillis Mian has the Met record of 191. More importantly, that's the tying run. And that's a strike, one and one to Espinosa. Here's Espinosa getting the bat out there and then pulling it back. He wanted to bunt. That was a good pitch to bunt. Like he was caught in between. Now he squares and gets it down. That's a good bunt by Espinosa. Will they throw him out? By a step. And so that should force the Cubs to bring the infield in with Bernard Gilkey coming up and the tying run 90 feet away. One out in the ninth. Well, Bernard Gilkey's paid to drive in this run. Dallas Green said, I'm going to get him to third. Now you got to get him in. Good bunt by Espinosa. That took a lot of time with this. Just did get Espinosa at first base. Well, Jim Riggleman is on his way to the mound. They've had the left-hander, Bob Patterson, throwing in the bullpen. They, they, they must just be discussing how to pitch to Gilkey because I don't think they're going to bring a left-hander in to pitch to No, nor with Chris Jones following Gilkey mm -hmm. in the order. You wouldn't think. They're discussing, you know, but Gilkey don't give him anything. Yet. Maybe walk him and pitch to Chris Jones. You mentioned Ray Knight last night taking a brave step. And yeah, then you're putting the winning run on, and you yeah. know Jones has done some late inning damage. The thing that drove me as a pinch hitter. Yeah. The thing I didn't understand about the strategy with Barry Bonds. All right, it shows a lot of guts, but he could steal a base just as easily yeah. for you. What, are you going to put the tying run in scoring position with nobody out? So you're going by the book. Well, in that case, I don't mind the play, but not with Bonds. Anyhow, here's Gilkey. Fast ball away. I mean, if it were a Cecil Fielder or someone slower, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be as much of a threat to run. I don't like the book. Throw it out. Throw that book away. That book sometimes makes the game of baseball dull. All right, now the game boils down to perhaps this at bat. And Hubbard can't get Gilkey out of the way. Two pitches out of the strike zone. That one down low where Hubbard had to keep the ball in front of him. But it's tough when a manager goes out and you hear it time and time again. Don't give him anything to hit. We're not going to walk him intentionally. Don't give him anything to hit. Pitch and him tough. Put him on. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't disagree with this move right here. But I, I will caution you how I've been wrong before. <laughs> Kevin Minager tells me that all the time. <laughs> You know, right now, Riegelman's going with his gut instinct. And it, this is somewhat of a slap in the face to the next hitter, Chris Jones. But Jones doesn't play every single day, although, as Howie mentioned, he's been successful. He's been dramatic. But usually it comes when he's a pinch hitter as opposed to when he starts the game and gets four AB. So right now, Riegelman managing with his gut. He can be second-guessed, severely second-guessed guessed at this backfires. What it gives the Cubs the opportunity for is a game-ending double play. You see the infield now dropping back at short and second. I like it. I think it's a bold move by Regal. Obviously, Grace has to hold against Gilkey. Represents the go-ahead run.
Gomez even with or maybe a step behind the bag at third. So Jones will try and elevate. But he takes a strike. I'll tell you, a, a, a thing Jones could do if he could handle the bat to tie this ball game up. Everybody is, is set up for Jones to drive the ball. He could push the ball towards the right side, moving Gilkey to second and scoring Johnson. They have a tie game with Gilkey on second base. Did he go around? He did. And quickly, no balls and two strikes. Keep in mind, big move by Regelman, especially here in Chicago, where he would be second guessed if they, the Mets go on and Gilkey scores. Pettigini, a left-hand batter on deck. That's where you might get Patterson. The 0-2 to Jones. In the dirt, and the tying runs on the way to the plate. Johnson scores, and this game is tied. On an 0-2 pitch. Harry Adams threw one in the dirt. Hubbard couldn't handle it. The Mets have tied the ball game, and now the go-ahead run is in scoring position. Well, Regelman will be second guessed if Gilkey scores. Let's take a look. I'm not so sure. Yeah, it was a tough play. I mean, yeah, all Hubbard could do is get the ball in, or keep the ball in front of him, let it hit off his body. Here's Johnson, real good speed at third base. But somebody other than Johnson probably doesn't chance it. Slider missed. It's two and two. So the Mets have come back for the second time in this game. Johnson with four hits. Got this comeback started with a leadoff double. And the count full. Boy, Adams was cruising right through Chris Jones until he bounced that ball. Again, the man on the spot is the manager for the Cubs, Jim Regelman. But even prior to that, I thought it was a good move to walk Bernard Gilkey. Make Chris Jones beat you. Ball four. So now the Cubs have the double play set up again. Now let's see if the left-hander Patterson comes on to face the left-hand hitting Roberto Pettigini. Either that's a shopping list or he's making the necessary adjustments to his lineup card. Looks already like a double switch. Yeah, Gomez coming out of the game, so Magadan will probably go to third base. The left-hander will come in the ball game. So Jim Riggleman decided to put the go-ahead run on, not carrying the pitch to Bernard Kilke with the tying run on third and one out. That set up the double play possibility. The strategy was going along just fine. Terry Adams was in front 0-2, but he throws a wild pitch, and that's how this game has become all even at seven. Bob Patterson. Comes on from the bullpen. We'll be back after this. Action Park doesn't strap you down. Action Park lets you soar because you control the action. Bring your family and friends to Action Park and have a blast. Splashing into coolness at the world's largest water park. Just minutes away in nearby Vernon, New Jersey. Well, Jim Riggleman changing his pitcher. Uh, the one who leaves, kind of disgusted. Terry Adams threw the wild pitch that tied this game up. And so left-hander Bob Patterson comes out of the bullpen. That's Tyler Houston who goes in at third on the double switch. But Dallas Green makes a move of his own, sending up Alex Ochoa to hit for Roberto Pettigini against Patterson, who has been brilliant in relief lately. Popped it up. This one to the left side. And it's the shortstop Hernandez with the infield fly rule in effect, making the catch for the second out. Now the pitcher's spot is due up. Jerry DePoto, the scheduled hitter, but it looks like Carlos Baerga is going to swing a bat as a pinch hitter. How about going after the first pitch? I mean, basically, he's seen nothing of Bob Patterson. Well, the, the thing in pinch hitting is they tell you, get up there and get your pitch and rip it. And, it, you know, the first pitch you think you can hit, take a rip, because you're only going to get three rips. You're coming off the bench. It's your only A-B as a pinch hitter. 
as opposed to when you're going to bat four times in a game where you can take a pitch, set up a pitcher for your next at bat. That's a, the toughest job in baseball is to go up there swinging that bat one time, and Ochoa had to do it. Now Bayerga's going to do it with the abdominal strain. Uh, this game's been a stomach ache for Dallas Green, too, <laughs> seeing his team fall behind 6-1, to one, tie it, fall behind, tie it again here in the ninth. And Carlos Bayergo, who has said that he would not mind playing some first base in the absence of Butch Husky, of course, Rico Bronia, too, just might stay on and play first base when we go to the last of the night. It's possible. And a strike to Bayerga. Now Bayerga took the pitch as opposed to Alex Ochoa. a nice job pinch hitting over his career. One and one on Bayerga with Yoki on second. And Chris Jones on first. And a seven to seven tie. Robert Person getting ready to work the last of the ninth inning. Unless the Mets go ahead here, then I would think you'd see John Franco. Last ball for a strike. And Patterson spots the fastball. Not an overpowering pitcher, but effective against left-handers. Bayerga to turn around and bat right. He's only had one out of seven as a Met. One and two with two out. And the count even. Patterson has four saves in his last six games. Now he's just three runs over the last 21 outings, not innings, but last 21 times to the mound. Just missed. So now the count full and an advantage for the Mets because that'll give Gilkey and Jones an automatic start on the bases. The last pitch of Bayerga. Just missed. Bayerga gets a good look at the ball, doesn't he? He does. The outfield is deep. Almost any kind of hit will give the Mets the lead. Ball four. Third walk of the inning by Cup pitching, one of which was intentional. And now the base is loaded for Alfonso and no room for Patterson. So Bob Patterson allowing an infield hit, three walks. Dallas Green saying here. Not as though he had a making that hands down motion it's not like he's saying settle down boys they weren't exactly in a roar on the bench <laughs> who's got the energy to roar 101 heat index you'll see some hooting and hollering though if Alfonso comes through at least as far as that Met bench is concerned and he takes a strike nothing in one two hits today for Edgardo plus a sacrifice bunt and a productive hitter in these situations. On the outside corner. Nice. That, that, did that look any different than no. that pitch to Bayerga? No. And Hubbard made a nice, when he caught that ball, nice and relaxed. Watch him. He steals the pitch. Nice and relaxed. That's exactly where that pitch to Bayerga that was mm -hmm. called the ball was. Yep. Nothing in two to Alfonso. And the waste pitch away. Patterson has lived outside now for Bayerga and for Alfonso. He has yet to come inside. Hubbard goes out there with the target, sits on the corner, takes the umpire with him. And the one-two pitch. Rip off the glove of Houston. And the Mets take the lead. 
Eduardo Alfonso comes through with a little help from the Cubs defense, and it's eight to seven, New York. How about Patterson? He challenged him inside, broke his bat, but Tyler Houston was unable to field it cleanly. So I don't think you'll see Patterson come back inside. Now watch this. This is the only time he comes inside. Alfonso brings his hands in and outs the bat and picks up a key hit driving in a run. Tyler Houston just came in the ball game for defense, which is not an easy chore, especially when you're a catcher by trade. They give Ordonez a hit. Let's see, did they do any hooting and hollering on the bench? Remember Dallas trying to settle things down? Glass stand. Well, some of them anyway. So the 0-2 count has really hurt the Cubs in this inning when you think that Patterson was 0-2 on Jones through the wild pitch and eventually walked him. 0-2 on Alfonso threw a pitch outside, gave up a hit. Now it's 1-1 one one to Ordonia. And Ordonia's 3 for 4 in his game. He's relaxed at the plate right now. Patterson better watch out. He can handle that ball out over the plate. There's no team in baseball that has a good record when they're trailing at the end of eight innings. Because it'll short men out of the pen. Never quite understood the relevance of that statistic. Luke towards the right field line, but twisting. Fair ball! Fair ball! Two runs score, and here comes Alfonso with the third run. It's a triple for Ordonez. First, it looked like Gordonius gave up on that ball. He didn't bust it out of the box. He probably thought it was going to go foul, but it stayed there. Patterson went away. Gordonius hit the ball where it was pitched. He's now four for five in this game. I believe that's three times this season with four hits for Ordonius. And here's the key hit in this game. Ball out over the plate, and he goes. Now, look, at he's saying, is this staying fair? It's fair. I better run. And the ball landed just fair. It can't land foul down there. And by the time Sosa picked it up, three runs had scored. Four for five for Ray Ordonez. And suddenly the Mets have a four-run lead. Look at that. If you hit a ball down there that's going to fall onto the grass, you better run. It's going to be a fair ball. It has a couple inches down there deep in the foul in, in uh, the corner that it might go foul, but the umpire might not be able to see it. And a ball to Todd Hundley. Five runs in in the inning, and it's 11 to 7 New York. One and one on Todd. Todd swung the bat at that one like he needed the day off. Mets have not roped anything in this ninth inning. You know, the double by Johnson, a chopper over third. Three walks. Alfonso breaks his bat, loops it off the glove of the third baseman. And that one a looper. Off the inside corner, two and one. So now it's the Cubs who are going to have to do some serious coming from behind. And that's fouled off, two and two. They'll have Tyler Houston, Scott Bullitt, and Ryan Sandberg scheduled. And will Jim Riggleman be second guest for walking go-ahead run? I think he will be, but I, I thought it was a good move. Gilkey has a, a, been a dominant hitter in the National League. You had a part-time player batting behind him. He took a chance. He lost. Rip to Houston at third. He makes that play. And the Mets are retired in the ninth inning, but not before they do a ton of damage. They score five times on three hits. They leave one last licks for the Cubs, 11 to 7, New York. We're going to the last of the ninth here at Wrigley Field. He didn't rope the ball, but he'll accept congratulations for his bases clearing triple. But the big hit in that inning was Alfonso Ordonez put icing on the cake, but the guy who baked the cake was Edgardo Alfonso. Patterson made a real good pitch inside. Alfonso fought it off. Tyler is a Houston.
Houston or Houston? Didn't come up with it. It's Houston here, Houston and Lower Manhattan. Okay, and, a boy, and Tyler Houston didn't come up with it, and Alfonso uh, had a base hit, a key base hit. You see Alex Ochoa in right field. Chris Jones is now at first base. And a new pitcher. That would be John Franco. This is not a save situation because John inherits a four-run lead. Uh, with the Mets having lost their last three. Alice Green wants to go to his closer, who just needs the work as well because with the Mets struggling lately, John Franco has not had a lot of pitching opportunities. Last pitched on the 3rd of August. That was on uh, Saturday night in the win over the Cardinals. And Brian McRae will bat for Tyler Houston. And he fouls it off. Gray's been bothered by a sore left wrist. Played the first two games of this series, but not in the starting lineup this afternoon. The Cray, Scott Bullet, Ryan Sandberg, scheduled against Franco. Lifted to right. Room for Ochoa. One gone. And against the left-hander, Jim Riggleman's going to make, make another move here. Veteran utility infielder Felix Fermin will come to the plate instead of Scott Bullitt. So Felix Fermin, who's been around, broke in with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's playing in the minor leagues with, Ottawa, with uh, Iowa when the Cubs picked him up less than a month ago and he takes a strike from Franco. 11-7 Mets here in the ninth. And a good job by Jones to hold the bag and the Cubs are down to their last out. Espinosa cutting in front of Ray Ordonez and I think it's becoming disconcerting to Ordonez. He's not used to the third baseman cutting in front of him. Usually when the ball's hit near Ordonez it's you take it. Jones is throwing from down under and getting the ball to tail. Watch him. He doesn't come over the top. He has a good, strong throwing arm. When you throw that ball sidearm like that, the ball tends to tail into the runner. So it's up to Sandberg. And he takes ball one. Boy, these teams mirror images of each other. The Cubs, every time they get near 500, have slipped back. They're within two now, having won their last couple, but are one out away from dropping three games behind 2-0 to Sandberg and the Mets have made several pushes towards 500 only to fall backwards try to break a three game losing streak and get to within seven of the 500 mark 2-1 and one now to Sandberg Dallas Green knows how Jim Riggleman feels and vice versa Three and one now on Sandberg with Mark Grace on deck. This will go to Florida. Cubs will begin a six game road trip in Montreal, which they will finish next week at Shea Stadium before the Mets head to Mexico and California. And Mexico against the Padres. And the count full now to Sandberg. Played football in Monterey, Mexico the other night. Dallas mm -hmm. Cowboys and it was a Kansas City I think they show Kansas City Chiefs defensive end Neil Smith doing some bullfighting in Monterey Sandberg pops it up and this ought to do it Espinosa makes the catch and put it in the box the resilient Mets come back a couple of times Scoring five runs in the ninth inning and have defeated the Chicago Cubs 11 to 7. That's with 17 hits. And they needed just about every one of them to put away the Cubs and salvage the final game of this three game series. Eduardo Alfonso had the hit that put the Mets in front. Broken bat 
liner to third, which Houston couldn't feel cleanly. And so the Mets will have a little happier flight to Miami than they might have just about a half hour ago. Well, one manager is going to be happy. The other will be second guest. And here's the reaction. Regalman saying, don't come down, please. <laughs> This has been a presentation of Sports Channel, a tradition of excellence and innovation in regional sports television.